In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good to be with all of you who are watching from wherever you are, and whatever, in most cases, whatever time of day it is, to be with us at St Simon's in Roeville. And for those of you who are a long way away, and there are a few who watch from quite some distance. Roeville is in the outer eastern area of the city of Melbourne, and it's part of the state of Victoria, and very much part of Australia. And I say that knowing that the responses from people indicate that we have people watching from, well, here, there, and everywhere. But wherever you are, even if you're just down the road, you're most welcome to be part of this Mass the Thursday of the 27th week of the year. It's uh, been hard to remember all these things and, and these challenging days. But we hope that you're managing life as best you can. We talk all the time about COVID, but of course there are so many other issues of life, of health, of opportunity, of relationships, which can be a challenge to us at all times. And we come together to ask the Lord's help, guidance and strength. Let's just pause for a moment now at the beginning of the Mass and we'll ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, in the abundance of your kindness, you meet the desires of all who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us and pardon anything our conscience fears and give us what we need. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Are you people in Galatia mad? Has someone put a spell on you? In spite of the plain explanation you have had of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, let me ask you one question. Was it because you practiced the law that you received the Spirit, or because you believed what was preached to you? Are you foolish enough to end in outward observances what you began in the Spirit? Have all the favors you received been wasted? And if this were so, they would most certainly have been wasted. Does God give you the Spirit so freely and work miracles among you because you practiced the law, or because you believed what was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response all your psalms. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has come to his people. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has come to his people. God has raised up for us a mighty Saviour in the house of David, his servant as he promised by the lips of holy men, those who were his prophets from of old. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has come to his people. A saviour who would free us from our foes, from the hands of all who hate us. So his love for our fathers is fulfilled, and his holy covenant remembered. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has come to his people. He swore to Abraham our father to grant us that free from fear and saved from the hands of our foes, we might serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has come to his people. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him in the middle of the night to say, My friend, lend me three loaves, because a friend of mine on his travels has just arrived at my house and I have nothing to offer him. And the man answers from inside the house, Do not bother me. The door is bolted now and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give it to you. I tell you, if the man does not get up and give it to him for friendship's sake, persistence will be enough to make him get up and give his friend all he wants. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For the one who asks always receives. The one who searches always finds. The one who knocks will always have the door open to him. What father among you would hand his son a stone when he asks for bread? Or hand him a snake instead of a fish? Or hand him a scorpion if he asked for an egg? If you then who are evil know how to give your children what is good, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If we listen to those words of Jesus, you would think, very understandably, well, <laughs> why do things go wrong? Why don't I get what I pray for? Why don't I get rewarded for the good things that I do? Because sometimes I get the opposite. I get sick, or people I care about get sick. I lose my job. I lose my security. My family falls apart. And I say my prayers and I'm trying to do the right thing and I ask for things to get better, and they don't. How come? It's a good question. It's a very good question, especially when we're in the middle of it and we're going through a very hard and difficult time. But interesting, when the apostles asked Jesus to teach them to pray, he established a relationship between ourselves and God by using words, two words, that indicated that our relationship was that of a parent and child. He said, when you pray, pray like this, our Father. Now, parent and child is a language, a wording that we understand because we all go through that. For some, it's a very benevolent and uplifting, and hopefully for most, and a very valuable relationship. Others, life can be pretty tough right from the outset. But at least we know what Jesus is trying to say, that he's talking about the relationship between parent and child, as it should be, of love, of care, of providence. These are the ways in which we engage with God and recognize his role in our life. So you can find the most loving parent. Does the most loving parent always give the child everything the child wants? Remember being in a house once where little kid, little little boy is about oh, just on the crawling stage, maybe 18 months and he found two things which fascinated him. One was a screwdriver. The other was a PowerPoint. So what happens if you put the screwdriver into the PowerPoint? Oh, and here's this little knob or switch. What happens if I pull that down? And of course, he's having a great time trying to figure this out and mum or dad comes in and immediately whisks him away, snatches the screwdriver out of his hand, 
What is the reaction of the 18th month old? <laughs> not happy. Of course they're not. No understanding of this bigger picture, of what was giving them a lot of fun at the time, most enjoyable, exploring here, exploring there, but it was downright dangerous and could well kill the child. But of course, the child didn't understand that, and so protests. We're a little like that. We wrestle, and people have wrestled for years with the whole issue of why, if we say, bad things happen to good people, and so on. And yet, as we look at these words of Jesus saying, hey, even when bad things are happening to you, remember that God cares about and loves you. And it might take a while, and you may not understand it at the time, but ultimately, the, even the bad things that happen to you will be for your good. If not in this life, and this is where we're stretched a bit, because we can look at people who lost their lives in accidents or in any number of different awful circumstances, and we look at people who've been killed in war, in concentration camps and so on, we say, how can that be the loving God, the loving Father that all you Christians keep talking about? The answer is, well, the story's not over. When we go in the grave or in the crematorium or whatever, it's only part one of a very lengthy mini-series. And so we've got to see that in those circumstances. I suppose even if you look at the perspective of television series and so on, we see that all the time. We see a story played out at the end of episode one or episode two. Things may not be going well at all. But later on, and by the time the story is finished and the final scene has been filmed, well, things fit into place. We understand, we've got the whole picture, and things have worked out. Life itself is like that. Not just only our physical life, but our whole life of what we carry with us in God. So what do we do? Does that mean we say, oh, well, that explains everything. We're fine now, and I've lost my job, my family's fallen apart, my business is worthless, but now you've said all that, now it's all terrific, thanks very much. Is it going to be like that? No, of course it's not. But maybe, maybe there's that little bit of understanding which says, hang on. And that was the perseverance of the earlier part of that story. You keep banging on the door, and you keep at it, and eventually it will come through what you're after. And that's not necessarily our experience in what we see as the long term. But in God's plan, it's only the short term. So we pray for that sense of vision, for the perseverance, and most of all, that sense of understanding that when bad things are happening to us, we get a glimpse of that maybe by thinking back to some of the things that have happened to us that were very difficult to manage at the time. And we look back and we think, yeah, it wasn't easy, it wasn't good, I certainly didn't enjoy it, but I learned something from it, and I'm probably a better person for it. I was hurt, I was angry, but maybe I've learned something that has made me a better person. And I mightn't have seen it that way at the time, I mightn't have seen it that way for some time. But further down the track, yep, yeah, maybe, just maybe, he knew what he was doing. Our prayers of intercession. Christ greeted us with good news. May the world hear it through us and find hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, Lord of heaven and of earth. You are the hope and joy of people in every age. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May the coming of Christ transform the church and renew its youth and vigor in the service of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord, grant us a true knowledge of salvation, so that freed from fear and from the power of our foes, we may serve you faithfully all the days of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. We ask you to receive us and please for the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, accept the sacrifices instituted by your commands through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service. May you graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God, of, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now wherever we are, whoever we're with, as best we can, socially distance, of course, we offer each other a sign of peace and friendship in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have, have mercy, mercy on, us. on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have, have mercy, mercy on, us. on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant, grant us, us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we're very much aware, the little spiritual communion prayer, which somebody asked last week, where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> so I have no idea where it comes from, but it's being used all over the world. It's a beautiful prayer that really unites us with that sense of the Lord's presence in the Eucharist. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. 
and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament we have received. May we be transformed into what we consume. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.